All right. So what's significant about skepticism in animal faith? Well, skepticism in animal faith is the first Santayana book I ever read. Uh, it was uh, as a senior in high school, in high school, senior in college, and the person who uh, assigned it in a senior seminar was uh, T.G. Henderson, who wrote on Santayana with Whitehead. He never published much on Santayana except a little squib at the end of his uh, Santayana's life. Um, he visited Santayana. He had visited him. And, and wrote a note. Uh, anyway, uh, I was struck by the book uh, for one reason and dismayed by the book for another. Uh, I was struck by the book because I thought it was the finest account of skepticism and the most wholehearted skepticism that, uh, that I've ever seen. And, and I maintain that today. I don't think there's a better skeptic than Sadiana uh, in the first half of the book. But I was dismayed about the book also because I thought that when Santayana was coming back to restore all those beliefs that, that he had knocked down, I thought he was cheating. Something was wrong and I couldn't figure out what it was. But I got so involved in trying to figure out what it was that uh, I got stuck on Santayana and kept reading the book and eventually uh, wrote a master's thesis and a, and a, and a dissertation on it. Well, it's only in the last few years that I managed to figure out, to my satisfaction, what's problematic about the book and what this made me. And it's this, the, the real innovation of the book uh, is a new philosophical method. It's the method of establishing philosophical theses on the basis of animal faith. And this is novel, this is new, this is revolutionary. Sadiana doesn't make as much of it as he could. But he was a modest man, so he, 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 he didn't want to be a con to saying that uh, hey, I, I've invented the great philosophical method and everybody step aside. Uh, he, uh, but he did invent this, and this is a wonderful, wonderful method. It's, uh, it's the method of believing only things that you can enact and looking to your actions to see what kind of beliefs they involve. All of this is just right. What's not right about the book is that Sadiana wants to build up from uh, the bedrock of essences all the way to truth and spirit. And he wants to build that up little by little just as he tore it down. But building up that way is not the way that the method of animal faith works. Uh, the method of animal faith is, is, is a method that gives you uh, the most generic beliefs that we have implicated in our actions. And therefore, it's got to begin with something like the realist uh, manifesto, the, the, the realist assumption that we all make, namely that there are things outside of us. N not with discourse, as Sadiana begins, and then slowly moving in the direction of, of, a, of, a, of a greater and greater complexity uh, of beliefs and so once I figured this out I'm, I'm, I'm not upset by the book anymore. I, I, I know what's happened. He, uh, uh, he wanted to make the book symmetrical, uh, tear down, build up, but the symmetry doesn't quite work in which he, uh, it, it doesn't quite work in the way in which he wants it to work. That's okay. He comes away with a marvelous invention and that is the invention of the method of animal faith in determining philosophical uh, uh, beliefs and philosophical theses. And he does in the process show how powerful uh, skepticism can be. Great. Are there, um, are there books that you think uh, by Santiano that are weaker than others? No, only different from others. Okay. I, I think he's a marvelous writer. I mean, you you read a book like uh, Platonism and the Spiritual Life, and it is a marvelous statement of the difference between spirituality and politics. Uh, so so you got to distinguish the moral life from a life of spirituality, if it's possible to lead a life of spirituality. Uh, marvelous book, very short, uh, but but right to the point. Um, even a book such as Dominations and Powers, which is literally pieced together out of materials over many decades, 
uh, even that is, is full of light, full of insights, uh, and, and sufficiently annoying to people to be very pleasing to me. One book that I anticipate people dismissing, because I've heard them do it several times, is Egotism in German Philosophy. What, what can be said about Egotism? Uh, well, it was, it was one of those books written during the First World War. Uh, Dewey wrote one. Uh, everybody wrote one. Uh, only the dead, like James, didn't write one. Uh, they were really angry at, uh, at the Germans. And of course, you fasten upon German philosophy, 19th century philosophy, and dead gum it for good reason. Uh, 19th century German philosophy is chock full of all kinds of very bad ideas. Uh, ideas uh, of, of jingoism, of, of, of fake development, of historical uh, uh, of history, uh, developments of uh, uh, kind of stress on positing as in Fichte out of nothing, uh, the creation on the basis of the will alone, uh, a, a, a sort of fictive world, and Santiago goes for that goes after that, I should say. Sadiana goes after that, I think shows it to be uh, spurious, uh, not sufficiently naturalistic. Uh, so I, 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 would not, I would never read the book as an account of German philosophy of the 19th century, but, but I, will, I, I, I certainly like reading the book because it, it really r ruffles the feathers of the Germans and, uh, uh, and, 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 and and softens them up with a few blows. Um, do you have uh, comments for um, on uh, the last Puritan? Uh, I have maybe of all of Sadiana's books, I have the greatest difficulty with that, and I know that many of my colleagues and friends really appreciate it. Um, I guess I don't like nineteenth-century novels. Uh, there is a lot of description in there. Uh, there's a lot of description of ideas in there. Uh, I, I'm a simple-minded guy. I like to know where a guy stands. And it's hard to figure out sometimes in, uh, in The Last Puritan as to where Sariana stands. And that's okay in a novel. It doesn't matter where Dickens stands. Uh, but I always view the novel as a statement of philosophy. And it as such, uh, it's probably my mistake to do it because I've got to view it as a work of literary art, and and not as a view as 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 a work of uh, philosophical reflection. So that's my main problem with it. It's my problem, not Sadi. And it's a marvelous book. Otherwise, I think I enjoyed reading Persons and Places more than The Last Puritan, and I've and and people compare these books sometimes. Um, what did you think of Persons and Places? Well, now that's just exciting. It's, yeah. it's very, very interesting because it, it it gives you his reflections on a variety of people of historical interest, uh, people that uh, uh, you know we read quite independently of Santayana, uh, and 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 you learn a lot about them. Now you. You, you learn a lot about them, of course, through Santayana's eyes, and therefore you learn as much about Santayana as about them. Uh, but, uh, uh, I mean, I just, I just found that full of insight and, 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 and full of fun. Great.